Okay, so yeah. Um, my talk is not as complex as Tobias' talks, actually. Um, I'm just talking about secrets handling in Kubernetes. Um, yeah, it's about, it's about secrets in Kubernetes. Who am I? Uh, I'm a platform engineer at Nine. My name is Sebastian Nickel, aka Nick. Um, I'm interested in containers, Kubernetes, Golang, all that new, new fancy stuff, basically, but also in old road bikes, I guess, that connects me a bit to you, I'd say. Um, yeah. What is this about? Um, well, the whole thing, as I already said, it's about secrets. Your Kubernetes workloads, so your pods, for example, they might just need access to secrets, like passwords, certificates, or whatever. And obviously, we can store those secrets in a Kubernetes secret. I mean, it has a specific type or kind for that. And then we can mount it into the pod, but the talk is more about how should we actually manage those secrets? How should they be created? and also the content be managed. And uh, that actually depends on the use case. So the most obvious is just add the secret manually via kubectl. I mean, everybody of us, or at least everybody who worked with Kubernetes so far has done that. You take your secret, you're, you write into a file, you use kubectl, and then you fire up, um, or you, you basically push it to the cluster. The cool thing is, I mean, that's good for one-off tasks and it's very fast done, but there's no version control for it. Um, it's not really automated. I mean, you could argue now my keep control command is in the script, but it's not really, I'd say, automated and it can be changed by anybody with access actually. So if it would be like written all the time by an instance, which is, which is external, like no human, then I think that would be better. So yeah, it's fast, but maybe not the best for production use cases. If you want more control, uh, you can use GitOps techniques, right? So for example, Argo CD, which is that nice tool uh, which reads a configuration from a Git repository and just pushes that configuration um, continuously to, the, to your Kubernetes cluster. You change your stuff in Kubernetes, for example, uh, in, in your Git repo. You do a merge request that gets accepted, you merge it, and then Argo CD will take that up and push it to your cluster. Everything is automated, everything is fine. You have a history, cool. The thing with that is actually your secret might be just plain text, right, a password. So uh, plain text or base64 encoded secrets, should we put them into Git? No, we shouldn't, because Git was actually not designed to be a secret store. Right, so because if your if your Git repo ever gets um, like taken up by some not really kind person, they will just be able to read your secrets. That's just a an example for a Kubernetes secret. You know, all the stuff is basically base sixty four encoded there, and base sixty four encoding is not really encrypting stuff. Um, yeah, so. Sealed secrets to the rescue. I mean, there are actually other projects which take the same approach, but I decided to go with sealed secrets because yeah, we just um, chose that project to be the default or one of the default applications we deploy in our managed GKE um, solution. Yeah, the project is from Bitnami. The sealed secrets project consists of controller. That's basically, uh, yeah, that reads an encrypted sealed secret. So the sealed secret is a, is a specific kind, a CRD, coming from the project. Uh, it reads that custom resource and basically turns that into a Kubernetes secret. So what it will do, it, in the end, you will have your Kubernetes secret, but in Git, you will have encrypted content. Uh, it uses public and private key encryption. We encrypt with the public part and the controller knows about the private part and can so decrypt the secret. Um, you have a CLI application called kubeseal, which handles the encryption part. Um, yeah, but we, as some people are not really CLI aware or, or friendly, we, we, we have a UI, UI basically, uh, I just hope that works, in our uh, cluster for every project. So you go there, you type some, some stuff there, right? Test password, and it will just spit out the sealed secret. So that's the the sealed secret, and then you just put that and yeah, into your Git. You copy it and put it into your Git, and um, everything should be fine. So that's cool, um, yeah, I like it, but um, what if more automation is actually needed? <laughs> the thing is, because, because yeah, if you, if you want to automate things, um, writing that new configuration to Git is not really cool because, 
because Git is not really an API, right? I mean, you need to deal with merge conflicts or stuff like that. So that shouldn't be the, um, yeah, the ideal solution. So in, in my example here, we have basically three teams. We have team A, which is just developing a Kubernetes application. We have team B, which is dealing with uh, creation of, of external resources like databases, Elasticsearch clusters, I don't know, Redis, whatever you can think of, right? And then there's another team which um, runs an application just on a VM and not on Kubernetes. So, I mean, they, they might just need to, 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 um, to exchange secrets. And there is a piece in the middle, actually, which, is, which we'll reveal in a, in, a, in a second. And I think that just shouldn't be Git, right? We need some communication between the teams for the secrets. And yeah, obvious. I mean, there are cloud solutions as well. There's, for example, the GCP Secrets Manager, but uh, the open source um, basically solution which almost everybody takes is Vault. Vault from HashiCorp, which is a, yeah, a, a secrets manager, basically. Uh, it can be deployed highly available um, since I don't know which version actually, it can just do it by itself before it depended on, uh, for example, a console cluster. Uh, but now you can just spawn up multiple pods. They will use a raft consensus algorithm and then they will be highly available. Yeah, uh, we can there store secrets in a key value fashion at a certain path. So Vault is path based. Um, for example, you write just a key value store to slash credential slash database. And someone else can read it at that path again. Um, and it encrypts at rest and it supports multiple storage backends. So if you don't want to see your stuff to be stored in files, you could store it, for example, in Cassandra or in another database or, or whatever. Um, yeah, and multiple, it also supports multiple secret engines. Uh, in the beginning, I didn't really understand what, the, what a secret engine is, but um, if you think more of it, then, uh, like you, you want to create actually a secret. You, you, you say to Vault, I want to have a new secret for that and that use case. Uh, and, and one use case actually is uh, creation of temporary MySQL credentials, for example. So Vault has a connection to your database. You ask Vault for a credentials pair. Vault will go to the database, create the credentials pair, and keep a lease of it, basically. So it knows when to delete the pair again. Yeah, but we will see that later. And it also supports policies. So not every application which talks to Vault has access to every secret. I guess that's a one of the main features it actually has. And those policies are path-based. So you can say, okay, path slash credentials slash database is only accessible by certain applications. Yeah. So back to the example. Um, yeah, back to the example, right? <laughs> um, so the thing here is um, if my Kubernetes application actually talks voltage, so it under understands the, the Vault API, then that's not a big deal. It's the same for the application running on the VM. If, if they all talk to Vault, basically, that's, that's cool. And then we don't need anything actually uh, besides that. But sometimes you just have applications which don't know anything about Vault. They just want to read their credentials from a local file, for example. Um, and that's basically, yeah, what I want to talk, talk about. Um, we don't have any direct Vault integration, so we actually need a way to get the Vault content into Kubernetes secret where our application can read it from. Um, one way of doing this is using the Kubernetes external secrets controller or project. Um, yeah, that actually what I found out yesterday is actually they're currently rewriting it in Go um, because they're actually uh, free companies. They did almost the same. So everybody developed the uh, controller for, for, for that. And then they joined forces and now they want to rewrite it in Go uh, under the uh, URL I pointed last year. Uh, so far I took the, the, the current existing project. So um, yeah, you have an external secret resource. It's uh, similar to a sealed secret, I mean, from a CRT standpoint. So you have a uh, custom resource. Uh, it supports multiple backends. So it can read the secret from Vault and also from, for example, GCP Secrets Manager. And instead of putting the plain text of your, or, or an encrypted version of your, of your password or secret into, into Git, um, you just specify the path to in, in Vault to, for your secret in your external secret. Then you create the external secret, the controller will fetch the content from Vault, 
and um, then it will create a Kubernetes secret with the real content it fetched from Vault. Yeah. Uh, and it, additionally, it allows for templating the created Kubernetes secret because if you think of Vault, you have a key value store, uh, but you actually expect, I don't know, some TOML, YAML, or whatever format uh, in your configuration file for your application, then you can use templates, templates in the external secret um, CRD, and it will just use the, the real data from Vault, put it into a template, and then generate your configuration file, for example. Yeah, okay. So that's the first demo. I actually hope that I can put it here. Okay. Um, yeah, so I prepared a little kind cluster actually. Um, oops, okay. Um, which should show that. What do we have here? What have, do I have in my kind cluster? Um, for the, the example now, I just have a vault. I have a vault server there. Uh, deployed. It's just no HA, just a single vault with um, in dev mode. So there's also no encryption or whatever, but it's perfect for uh, playing use cases. Um, I have a producer, which is a small Go binary, and that will actually write um, a secret every five seconds to uh, to a specific vault path, a, a new secret. And for the example for now, I also have the external secrets controller deployed into a namespace and I have an external secrets consumer which mimics basically your legacy application which doesn't have any integration with Vault. Uh, it just reads stuff from a predefined um, directory. Yeah, so that's, that's what I have. Um, I'm already in the right directory. What do we have here? That's the external secrets consumer thing I just talked about. Um, that's the external secret, right? The, the CRD I, I talked about. Um, I specify the backend type vault. I'm not sure if that's actually big enough. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. Uh, I give the key value version. Vault supports two uh, key value versions. Not really, doesn't really matter for now, but I, I specified version one. Um, and I'm just saying, okay, please read, um, please read the uh, key or the path, basically, credentials producer. That's the secret my producer application writes to. Uh, that's the vault path. And just read the uh, key credentials. They call it property, but in the end, it's just one key of that vault path. And yeah, and, and what it will do, it will just create a secret with the name credentials, so with the same name as my external secret, and put the real data in there. I also have the consumer. That's what I also said. It's just a it's very simple deployment with a, with a small Go, Go app, reading everything what it finds um, under slash config. And that's where I mount the, the credential secret at, right? So if I just do a KC apply minus F, um, I have a pot now, my consumer pot, and I also have um, my Credential secret now, right? That's not the external secret. That's my my real Kubernetes secret. And um, if I do a log of my pod, I can barely see my mouse pointer here. You what you what you just see that is that um, it reads basically every what did I put in every two seconds or so um, reads all the contents from slash config. It found the file uh, called credentials. So the the actual um, name uh, I configured at the, uh, in the external secret. And it found the content, password, uh, username, admin, and yeah. What you can see here is if I, I, I told you that I'm writing actually um, a different secret. That's very interesting, right? I'm writing a different secret every five seconds, but in my pod, that's actually not really changing, right? So, um, I guess we need to have a look into the secret. Um, so YAML um, credentials, and then we we also watch it. I don't know if we can actually see the values here. Yeah, it's a small uh, secret credentials minus o YAML oh, credentials. Right, okay, hard for me to write actually. 
Uh, where is my data? I actually don't see that. There we go. So let's say we have, um, what at the end? <laughs> L-U-I-N zero or something like that. Oh, it's not really changing. So maybe my producer doesn't really work. I'm not sure. It worked well last time. Um, because in the, in the secret, it should actually change every five seconds. Hmm. My producer works. It writes a different secret every five seconds. So, uh, um, what is it? External secrets consumer. Do we have a different thing now? Hmm. Very strange. I actually wanted to tell you that um, the secret gets updated every, um, I think it reads it every 10 seconds, the external secrets controller, but that will not be reflected um, in my pod. And that's, that's because um, if you ever mount a config map or a secret into your pod, it will only be updated or refreshed by Kubernetes every two minutes. Um, very interesting that my external secrets controller doesn't update it, although Vault is updated. I don't know. But yeah, you need to keep that in mind. Actually, if you mount something into your pod, you have a, by default, you have a two minutes uh, delay for new values. I don't know if you will ever change credentials that fast, but yeah. Okay. I just need to get that through. That was a demo time already. Yeah. Uh, Vault agent sidecar injector. Um, as you have just seen that, um, yeah, certainly you, you haven't seen it that it wasn't updated, but uh, it should. Uh, there is another thing which comes directly from Vault, basically, or from HashiCorp. That's the Vault agent sidecar injector. Um, it's a different way of handling the secret because it will not, it will also read from Vault, but it will not put all the stuff into a Kubernetes secret, but instead uh, a sidecar to your, in your pod will be started which fetches the secret and writes it to a local shared volume, which is of type memory. So it doesn't even go to disk, but it's only in memory. Um, yeah, and no Kubernetes secret is involved. That's a project from coming directly from Vault. Um, yeah, and I tested it. <laughs> so uh, I guess that one. Sorry. Did I actually close my show? Okay. Well then. Um, humans, GCP meetup. Secret handling. Uh, there is the vault injector thingy. Okay. Um, what do we have here? It's actually, you can already see there is no external secrets YAML because we don't create that resource. We just create a deployment and all the, all the control basically is, is done with uh, annotations. Should I just increase that here? Um, we basically have annotations uh, attached to your um, pod. Um, and you just specify, okay, inject the agent, please, with agent inject true. We specify the path, again, credentials producer. Uh, we also need to specify a role. That's basically world works with roles. Um, you need to say when you log in or when you get a token, you need to say, I want to assume a specific role and um, a policy is basically also bound to a role. So yeah, you need to basically yeah, say what, what you want, but you can't, for example, you can't um, uh, use every role that's also coming from your configuration. Um, and then we also inject template. So I think that the, the configuration is a bit more complex, I'd say, um, compared to the external secret. Because by default, the, the, the vault agent just reads uh, what you have at credentials uh, producer or at your path, basically. But it will uh, not write it down as a JSON, but as a, I don't know, it looks more like a, like a, a Golang kind um, type, basically. So it will write map, you have a map, and then you have an, an, a list or whatever, right? So that's why I, I specified a template here, and that will just um, do the same thing. It will move everything. Uh, to JSON and store it at a given path. And that path is actually hard-coded in your Vault agent. You can't, you can't change that. It 
all your stuff will always be mounted um, at Vault Secrets. So my consumer will also read from Vault Secrets. Um, okay, let's hope the demigods will be with me this time. Uh, is he apply minus F? Uh, they, well, because I don't, I didn't use, oh, unexpected orcs. Did I actually change? Huh? Not sure, actually. What? Did I? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Ah. Okay, thanks. So, Kubernetes, we go to our uh, vault consumer namespace. We can see that now the consumer pod is running. After I fixed my typo. Um, and now we can already see that uh, we have a sidecar now injected, and now you need to specify the container name uh, for your logs. So I want to have the logs of my um, consumer pod, consumer, right? And yeah, it also says, okay, you found the file, content credentials, and um, what you can see now is actually that the content is changing, right? the content of my secret, and it also respects my given TTL of uh, five seconds. So here it's actually working. I don't know why it wasn't working in external secrets. Um, yeah, so that's that's really cool. Also, you don't have that two minutes delay now, right? Because it's actually writing to a file and not to a Kubernetes secret. So yeah, cool thing. Um, it worked for me. I, I had a bit of trouble with the whole templating thing until I got that working, but um, I think that you just need to get used to that. It's a console template, what they're using. Okay, okay. Actually like this. Okay, hello. Okay, so are there any important differences between those kind of approaches basically? Um, when using the external secrets, the refresh time of the secret in the pod will be lower. I mean, we've seen that. Right, with Vault, actually, you, you can just read it. Um, and when using external secrets, your secret or credentials will end up in etcd because you're actually creating a Kubernetes secret, right? So, yeah, it needs to, uh, you, you're, you need to trust basically your Kubernetes provider if they encrypt etcd because otherwise you can just uh, read it from there. Um, with, the, with the Vault provider, I mean, it writes to a memory. Right, so it never leaves basically your 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 local host, I'd say. Um, but that's also a downside of the vault injector, which I also noticed in my in my test. If your vault server is down, uh, then your your agent can't fetch the secret from vault during that time, and your pod actually won't start. Um, yeah, if if you think of it, if you have let's say your your vault runs in Kubernetes, where your workload also runs, then I don't think it's a big deal because uh, if you either have an etcd running in HA or if you have a vault running in HA, I don't see any big difference there. But but if vault is running outside and you have a big network path in between, then that actually <laughs> might be a problem for you. Um, and one downside I noticed is the static mount path when using the vault injector agent because it always mounts at slash vault slash secrets. Yeah, but in the end, actually, just just use I don't know, either of those solutions and Vault will already give you a high degree of, of automation, I'd say, and you can also centralize all your secrets in, in, in uh, one specific store. That's, that's very cool. Uh, and another use case I had, uh, let Vault handle your database credentials. I told you in the beginning about it. Um, the use case is just password rotation for applications. And I pointed it out here in the graph, basically, your Vault cluster has a connection to your database and it creates, uh, refreshes and revokes credentials for you and your Kubernetes application just periodically requests new credentials from, from Vault. And if it, for example, doesn't do that anymore, then that's cool because your credentials won't be refreshed and your application won't leave any unnecessary credentials around anymore. Um, and you, don't, you actually don't have to put specific credentials in any secret, right? You just need to know the Vault path. 
and that's it because your application will just read from that path and in that moment your vault cluster or vault server will create the credentials pair. That's um, really cool um, demo of this. Um, uh, forgot about it, MariaDB consumer. Um, so what I have here uh, is just, uh, where is it? A MariaDB, basically simple database. I created um, uh, a simple DBMS. I created one database, which is called staging. Um, I have my vault again and a MariaDB consumer, which will just ask for credentials, basically. Um, okay, okay, see, apply f dot, okay. I have my pots, pots are still initializing. We can maybe check the consumer YAML. So again, agent inject true, right? Um, I'm reading from databases cred staging. So I mounted the, the, the whole database, um, how you call it, the secrets engine at uh, databases and the access path to that is creds and then uh, a role you actually created. So I created a staging role, so all staging applications which need access to that database, they can just request, um, yeah, the staging role, um, which, is, which is different than that role, actually. That's a, that's a role used for the authentication to Vault, and that's a role used for the whole um, secrets engine. And yeah, I also wanted to play a bit with the templating more, so I'm just reading it and I'm putting it out as a, as a YAML, basically data username and data password. The secrets engine will just create those two fields at the, at the path, username and password. And again, I'm reading, the consumer just reads uh, from slash vault secrets. I guess, uh, I just hope, oops. Just hope it should be started now. So do Casey logs. Um, and I just need the consumer pot uh, container again. And as you can see, basically, um, what I also did is that my, um, that I configured, I think, a 30 second TTL of those credentials and the max TTL of one minute, I think. Um, so you can already see here that the credentials are changing now. Uh, in, the, in the back, your vault agent will try to um, to further increase the lease time of your credentials up to max TTL, so my max TTL is 60 seconds, and after that it will just ask for a new credentials pair. Um, yeah, and you can see username and, and password was written by, by Vault, but it also means your application needs to be aware and, and reread your, your credentials, basically, um, to, to have a new database connection or even to, to reinitialize the, the database connection. But I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's something cool. Um, you don't need to have, or you don't need to handle credentials at all. You just need to give proper policies and you need to know the path from where you need to read the credentials from. Um, yeah, that's something which is Vault agent, but I think it's also possible with the external secret. I just don't know if external secret will respect the TTL of the credentials that I didn't test actually. Um, yeah, that's already it, <laughs> I noticed. So, any questions? So there were no questions so far in the chat. Ah, oh, Tobias has a question. <laughs> I don't know if you have to repeat it maybe because I don't have a mic now, but uh, is this also possible with Cloud SQL or is it because you have the MariaDB inside your Kubernetes cluster? Is this connection between Vault and the database, um, Postgres slash uh, MariaDB, is it, uh, it doesn't matter where it is, right? So the, okay. But yeah, the question was, was basically, can I just use the same thing I showed that the, the last uh, slide with a Cloud SQL instance, so a GCP a managed database? Uh, yes, that is possible because just Vault needs to know a credentials pair with which it can actually connect to your database. There's actually a cool solution or a cool feature of that. It supports root credentials rotation, which is, I don't know, cool, but also a bit scary because um, it will rotate your root credentials uh, to the database regularly. Um, yeah, 
I mean, yeah, it, it's it's secure, I think, because you rotate the um, uh, the credentials, and if someone got knowledge of those credentials, leaves the company, then at least he has or or or, or she has basically a limited access of, um, to the database. But me, as a coming more from the from the admin side, I'd say it's a bit scary. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? So no more questions. Then I would say thank you very much, uh, Nick, for your talk. And uh, we're handing over to Silvana now.